Yes, we mentioned at half time uh, 10 different goal scorers for Belgium, which equals the record of France 1982, Italy 2006. Edin Hazard got the second, which just wrapped things up with a few moments to go as well. Hazard, as, as we're privileged to watch him in the Premier League on, on, on a regular basis. Yeah, I mean, these De Bruyne and uh, Hazard were just superb. But it came from the goalkeeper again. It's hard to be too critical, critical too much space for De Bruyne, and then they just get caught out. Jones. They're going to drive at you in that position because De Bruyne does that and then he turns his back, he's in a decent, not a very good position and Trippier gets caught out, there's loads of things happening but it was just, they were tired by then and it was, you couldn't blame them for being a little bit off the pace and I'd, at this point I don't want to be too critical and freeze frame too many things and say they should have done this, that and the other but it, and that right is the brilliant bit and it cutting across See, the, that's the last the one. defender. Yeah, it's, it's those natural kind of touches that take goalkeepers, take defenders out of it where you see him that he can't challenge him there. The goalkeeper's in no man's land. He could choose the left side, the right side to finish because the touch sets you up really well. Does he do them with the eyes, as you say? Well, to be honest, you can do whatever you want once you've got the touches. Once the touch is right, you're going in there with time because the goalkeeper wants you to, he wants you to, to, to have a bad touch or rush yourself so as it gives him the time to try and close you down. And by cutting across Jones like that, he's just saying, if you, if you touch me, That's it, exactly. you're, you know, and you'll, you'll probably be sent off. I say probably because, yeah. of course, Cup finally wasn't because yeah. he attempts to play the ball. But you know what I mean? You're, either I shoot or you bring me down. And it gives you penalty. that extra bit of time whereas you get the time to then... To pick your corner. Yep. England's chances actually fell to Eric <coughs> Dart, which was a bit of a shame they fell yeah. to Eric Dart, arguably, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, I mean, he actually did quite well with the one where he showed composure when he goes through on goal with this one. It's a good little one, too. And then you think, actually, you know, is he going to show the composure? And he doesn't. He dinks it over Courtois. That's not easy to do because Courtois has a huge presence when he comes out. But Alderweireld senses the danger and it's a great brilliant defending. And this one, the header as well, Gary, what do you think? Should do better? Yeah. Yeah. You've got to hit the target. You say you should do better. You just, you got, hit the target, that's what I say. He's a good header <laughs> ball as well. You've got to hit the target. You talk, we keep talking about England going forward in creativity. They, they have to defend better. You get the two <laughs> goals they gave away today, the other night. Rose, we see Rose doing that every week. And Jones as well today. I know Lisa, we can't be critical, but, but I can. You know, <laughs> if you defend like that, you're a, very hard to win a game of I football. I think he would say you know, England would be giving it everything in this final. Oh, yeah, okay. Of course, they give, everybody, yeah. everybody gives everything, but you've got to defend. The two goals they gave away were really poor. I think, I think to be fair, Lee's right. At the end of a tournament, you don't want to be seen to be going into the sort of minutiae of sort of individual errors for goals. But what I would say is the, the, the goal that cost us the other night, which John Stones gave away, or the one today that Jones gave away, we have seen it too many times. And, and rolls at the back post. <coughs> sweeping so these are things that will come back and haunt them they have to rid themselves of these errors but these players won't go they, yeah. they make if you make the same mistakes every week they are, it's going to continue they're not going to change though jones why, and rose why are they why do, do you think it is they're just not good at defending because they're not good they're enough not, they're not good defenders you keep making the same mistakes simply because they're not good enough they're, well, you know, they're, they're working with some great coaches if their coaches aren't going to change them they're going to keep doing it and they're going to cost you big style i, I think with john stones to be fair <coughs> he's not got the bank of games under his belt of playing what would be 45, 50 game seasons as a centre back to say, you know, if you remember Rio Ferdinand earlier on in his career or Gerard Piquet, and I look at the, I look at John Stones as being, he's nowhere near that level yet, but there's a potential. They did, they did rid themselves of those mistakes through basically coming into a better environment. So he's at City now, but he's got to play. <coughs> he's got to play 40, 50 games a season. And he's got to rid himself of those moments. So I get, I've got more faith in he potentially will get. You know, yeah, I'm talking it. more Jones and yeah, Rose. Yeah, yeah. yeah, not so much Stones. So Jones and Rose didn't play regularly last season. Stones played regularly up till about Christmas, didn't he? And then didn't much after that. Is this part of the problem then? If he's not playing regularly in the Premier League, he's more likely to make the same the sorts of mistakes that we saw with Mandzukic's winner. You can put it down to how many games you play, or you. You can put it down to the ability of the defender and if you, you as a defender you need to pick up information quickly when you're told because if you make a mistake normally there's a goal goes in unless your keeper saves you so you don't get away with it like missing a chance or something because you that's it it's a goal so you have to be picking information up and improving really quickly I think Stones is an excellent defender and will get better and he does make mistakes but <coughs> I, I agree the other two you know the other two Rose has done that, and I, I, I quite like Rose, but I think when he's in a defensive position like that, he switches off too often. Yeah. I think as a defender, I mean, I, I used to have a, if you look back over a season, you play 45, 50 games, you probably want to be at fault for around four goals. None. But you're going you're to make mistakes. Mm. But four goals is... <laughs> yes, <yeah. laughs> oh, 24 <laughs> That's not his strong point. Yeah, good wingers in front of him, let me tell you. Uh, four goals that you think, right, OK, I can be half at four. And that's not like, leaving your man at the back yeah. post. That's maybe being in the wrong position or something. 
And they've got to get to that sort of point whereby they go long periods of the season without making mistakes. And that is the thing. They've got to play more. And, and uh, clearly you two did. You would have had a manager who would say, if you carry on making mistakes like this and not learning, you won't be playing for this team much longer. And that's the, and that's yeah. the way it should be if yeah. you're at a top club. Yeah, you yeah. out the door. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look at what might have been <coughs> the tournament, which was Belgium's. And we've seen a brilliant uh, a goal from Mbappe for, for France. This, this argue would have been even better if it had gone. Yeah, I know the lads obviously hoping England win, but we were hoping yeah. it might go in just because of the movement, yeah. the pace, the decision making. And oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Super Simple play, quick play, one two touch. I know everyone's saying it's a great save. I expect you yeah. to keep it to make that save, but that was fantastic. And it summed up Belgium there, that kind of 15 seconds of action, 10 seconds of action, pure quality. <coughs> Let's just talk about Lukaku, because yeah. it's, a, he, he's a, it's a bit of a quandary, isn't he? My question being, is he a really natural goal scorer or not? Well, he's here in the Premier League. He has r runs of scoring well, goals see, and doesn't for This a bit. is early and was, you know, he's confident, he's, he's flying. There's not really too much pressure on him. But it's these ones where you think to yourself, the decisions he makes, he's trying to take a touch there. On his, on his favoured left foot, he doesn't need it. And even if you do, just take it away so you can then still get to finish it with your left foot. It comes off his right foot and, and it goes to the goalkeeper. This one, even worse, simply because take that with your right foot. Now what's going to happen is, is that Jordan Pickford needs him to have a bad touch or he's in, he's in no man's land. Look, Jordan Pickford's on his way. He needs a bad touch. A bad touch and he takes it. And those things, is this, this, look, how many touches? He could have touched that with his right foot so early in that move. Then the goalkeeper's in no man's land. Then he could do what Hazard done. You could choose whatever side you want to put 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 the ball. But it's not supposed. You know, he's, he's desperate to get the winning the, the score. But have you the seen him to get the, that? The, well, the thing is, when you do see him, like, I think he's in, in, in this tournament. I've seen him do stuff. Where you think, oh, okay, that's brilliant. Lukaku's doing really good stuff, holding it up, linking the play. But then you see him do something it. like that, and you think to yourself, well, that's the kind of stuff that is your bread and butter. Yeah. In respect to the touch, what you go and So if scored. I said to you he's not a natural goal scorer, what would you say to that? I'd say that it's a bit harsh simply because when the ball came through, you saw with the first one, he chose the right finish. And that's the main thing, choosing the right finish. His touch was poor in no situation. That's why people answer the, ask the question about him. So it's more a lack of touch rather than, you know, it's in, his instinct. Maybe it's lack score. of touch. Because why are you going to try and take it with the outside of your foot? Because it's a, it's a more difficult control. Belgium have won by two goals to nil. England are going to finish fourth at this World Cup. And we'll hear from Gareth Southgate in a couple of moments' time when we come back after their defeat in St. Petersburg this afternoon. <sighs> with Jackie Oakley. Well, Glenn said before the game how Gareth Southgate may be planning for the future using this game. What do you think he would have seen in this game that gives him optimism or perhaps even concern for the future? Well, I think the first half, they'll be very, very disappointed with the way they play. They look very slow. They didn't have a picture in their mind when they had the ball at all, Jackie. It was very pedestrian against what was a very, very good side. Uh, second half, the changes, Rashford and, Lin and Lingard came on and they were excellent. They were much quicker in their pitcher, passed the ball quicker. England played at times two or three touches and we had our best spell was when actually they went and got the second goal, which killed us off. But much better in the second half and Gareth would be pleased with that. But it's a, you can see the distinct difference between moving the ball much, much quicker. Yeah, so how do they close that gap between themselves and the top sides? Oh, well, listen, they're, they're, Belgium are six years ahead of us in their process. And the, the, the key ingredient, they've got two world-class players in their team. So we have got to get some, there's some catch-up to do. But in six years' time, where are we going to be? Where's the process in bringing these young players through now? They've gained great experience. They've, they've been fantastic for the nation. The pride that the football nation have got back is there. But we've now got to take a little bit of a step back, look at it and see where we can improve. And there's a lot of things we've improved that we've got to take it on and we've got to try and produce some really top quality players back in England uh, playing in the Premier League, which is going to be tough. Yeah, you say produce them. They are there, you could say, given their success at the underage groups. But the likes of Loftus Cheek we saw today promising. Does he need to move, do you think? Oh, without a doubt. There, there's a classic example where he has definitely got to play back-to-back -back games for a couple of seasons and then we'll see what he really can do. He had a great game today, even when we were playing poor, he was our best player. OK, it'll be interesting to see how these players develop for the next World Cup. The good news is they've got an extra six months to develop, because it's not four years, it's four and a half years in Qatar.
Thanks, Jackie. OK, I think we've done that game to death. There's a massive French flag out there in, uh, in Red Square. Let's look ahead to tomorrow. So exciting, the World Cup final. France, France the favourites, you would imagine. How hard will this be for Croatia to deny them? Well, we keep writing off Croatia. I'm a bit wary of doing that now. But, yeah, the, the France, the way they're, the shape they're in, the, the attacking players, they're pretty decent at the back. I think Pogba has been really excellent the last few games, so clearly favourites. Yeah, you don't want to hear Luka Modric saying Roy Keane wrote us off. That's why no, I'm, no. Really I'm, I'm not writing them off, but I fancy France. <laughs> yeah, because France seems to have got all the pieces in the right place. You talk about spine so often in football; their spine looks really <coughs> strong at the moment. The France. Yeah, they look like they've got the balance between the killer moments up front, but also they've got that sort of midfield Kante, Matuidi, brilliant defensive midfield players, and Pogba. When he breaks from, from, from deep positions through, like he has been doing this tournament, there's no one better than him in terms of joining uh, Griezmann and Mbappe. And then at the back, Varane is close for me for being player of the tournament in terms of his performance. Mm. Absolutely <coughs> brilliant, Varane. Yeah. Mbappe playing off well, Giroud. You know, Giroud yeah. gets lots of stick, but Mbappe and Griezmann well, playing off him has worked really well. You have well. to say, of course, you can't write Croatia off, but I think that they'll, if they start like they did against England, and, and these lot kick in, you know, with the midfield they've got and the forwards. You know, they will, they will punish them. And, you know, you, you, you could feel for them, but then it's, it's up to France to start with. It's a massive game for them. I, I think <coughs> Croatia have something that, that France fear, and I think it's that gritty sort of battle-hard ability to play football like they do with the Rebic and Perisic. And then Rakitic can't play as, worse, as bad as he did the other night. I, thought, yeah, I didn't think he played well at all. I think Modric <coughs> and him um, in that midfield can obviously create that. They're, Pretty tough at the back, apart from Lovren. Um, but that's, you know, he's. he's don't let, don't let, no, I only don't said let that from, you say I that. I only said that because <laughs> it's Roy's favourite player. But, um, but I, I think that the way they play yeah. against France will come out and play their football. I think we'll see the best of them. But I just think that Croatia just have something that's that nitty gritty mm. sort of football that might just. The thing trouble. from the French point of view is the hot <laughs> favourites to beat Portugal in their own Euros and didn't. They know the pressure. If they lose this tomorrow, they're a bunch of chokers. That'll be the headline, won't it? They've got to two finals. They're favourites for both and lost yeah. both. That brings its own pressure, doesn't it? They are expected to win this. Yeah, and I think they will win it. I think they will win it. I think they're the better team. Now, Croatia, you know, could play 10 games against France and they might win one. And that might be the start that Croatia could go and do it. But I do genuinely believe that France will win this match. They seem absolutely ready for it. And they, they, they'll have too much for me. For, for, for Croatia and that's, that's not disrespecting Croatia by the way it's just looking at the players that you've yeah. got on the pitch and the performances yeah. they weren't that great against England the other night mm. this idea although they yeah. weren't that great <clears throat> you spoke about pressure man. these players are used to pressure they're not playing for yeah. big clubs shouldn't be a problem to them dealing with the pressure side of it Mbappe 19 seven, yeah. two years ago playing the Monaco second 11 now he's one of the best players in the world uh, they, can't wait to see how he responds to the World Cup final you, you know you've got to say that it's it's a perfect stage for him. It's a perfect stage for all of them, really. But for him to really announce himself in a World Cup final, you can see him nicking a couple of goals out of that. But hopefully, I don't. Modric, I don't want Modric to say that I said that. Back <laughs> and Rod's now absolutely bad. And I don't want yeah. Slav to come out and say that. So hopefully, yeah. they won't, that, that won't happen for Croatia. I want them to win. I think, <laughs> I think we probably all thought Brazil would probably get to the final, maybe Spain around there. France were on the fringes of it. But I think we've got a really good <coughs> final tomorrow because I think we've got a, an, a, obviously a favourite and then a team that's going to give them a real run for the money. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to it tomorrow, gents. Really cannot wait. So join us for the 64th and final game of this compelling World Cup as France take on Croatia at the Luzhniki here in Moscow. Roy, Gary, Ian and Lee will be with us here in the studio. And of course, we're having to send a very excited Slav and Bilic pitch side with Ryan Giggs. 2.55 tomorrow here on ITV with all the build-up. Kick-off at four. Talking of four, England finish fourth at this World Cup. Belgium third, second and first, France or Croatia. Find out tomorrow with us. See you then. Bye-bye.